All right, salam alaikum and welcome to our new video about Streptococcus virgins. So we're back in the lab and we have our Streptococcal sample or when we see under the microscope, as you can see, this is a sample of Streptococcus gram-positive cocci and the catalase negative, but we don't know which kind of strep there is. Remember we said there are six kinds of Streptococcus and we differentiate them based on blood agar. So there are alpha hemolytic, beta hemolytic, and gamma hemolytic. And there are two kinds of streptococcus in each. Strep virudens is alpha hemolytic, as is um, strep pneumo. So on blood agar, this is what you're gonna see. You're gonna see partial hemolysis and green areas, remember that, around the colonies. So this tells us it's either strep viridans or strep pneumonia. Now in our last video we talked about strep pneumonia and this is a quick review. We said it was optogen sensitive and with bile we said that it's bile soluble and so you get a clear solution. Today's video is about strep viridans. So as you can see with strep viridans, it's all on the left. Um, strep virudens firstly is optogen resistant. Now if you look at the bacteria growing on the left, uh, where this pink arrow is, they grow right up to the optogen disc. So they're totally not uh, sensitive to the optogen. So basically strep virudens is totally opposite to strep pneumonia. It's bile insoluble, so if you mix it in a bile solution, the solution remains turbid. The bacteria are st still alive in there. And so these two results tell us that we have a sample of strep viridens. Now a few cool facts about strep viridens. Uh, viridis uh, is the Latin word for green. And this color green is very important in remembering all the facts about strep viridens, okay? So viridens firstly is, we said alpha hemolytic. Alpha hemolytic is color green. So this is the first green fact about strep virudens. Okay, second cool fact about it is I actually got this example from uh, MMRS, if you guys know that book. So the, the example you can use is green salad gets stuck in your teeth. And this kind of sounds weird now, but just bear with me and you'll see how this helps you remember everything about strep virudens. So strep virudens is basically actually a huge group of bacteria and it has many species within it. So talking about any disease, it's good to have a starting point in the body. I like to have a starting point where I can imagine that all the disease comes from and then it spreads throughout the body from that starting point. This is going to help us remember all the diseases that strep virudens causes. And it's not a lot really. Let's take the starting point for strep virudens as the mouth, so this is a mouth, yeah trust me, these, okay these are teeth, okay, let's just draw some green stuff here, remember we said for strep viridens, which viridens means green, imagine green salad in the mouth, so these are green bits of salad in the mouth, And the reason we chose a mouth is uh, viridens is normal flora of the mouth, uh, normal oral flora, and it's also in the GI. So the first disease it causes is in the mouth. And this is dental caries, also known as cavity. And yeah, basically it will uh, digest sugars in the mouth and cause uh, cavities. And the reason it can cause infection in the mouth is it can bind to the teeth through um, extracellular polysaccharide that it produces. Remember we talked about this in our first video and it produces extracellular dextrin and that allows it to cause dental caries. Now, someone has a cavity, he does a dental procedure and there's injury in the mouth so the strep viridens can travel through the blood and where does it go to? It goes to the heart. 
So the second disease it causes is in the heart, and that's subacute bacterial endocarditis. So how does it cause subacute bacterial endocarditis? Uh, just imagine that it does the exact same thing it does in the mouth. It produces dextrin and it binds to uh, previously damaged heart valves. And yeah, that's how it causes subacute bacterial endocarditis. Now, since it's already in the heart, it can go anywhere in the body, traveling through the blood again. So again, it can cause blood-borne diseases. And the third thing it causes is abscesses, because it travels anywhere, it can cause brain abscess or tissue abscess anywhere. Now, for step one, you need to know the specific species. We said strep virgins have species that cause these diseases. In the mouth, it's strep mutans. Um, in the heart, it's strep sanguinis. And you can remember this because sanguis actually means blood in Latin. So blood, heart, strep sanguinis. And the tissue abscess is caused by strep intermedius. And that's like intermediate anywhere in the body, you know, kind of in the middle, in the body, that's a tissue abscess. All right, question time. So what do strep virgins and strep pneumonia have in common? Both are alpha hemolytic. You can pause this by the way and just read the questions yourself. How are they different? How are they different? What three diseases does strep virgins cause? Please tell me you know this. It's very simple. And fourthly, what's the starting point? And we said this, so just remember the green salad. Salad in the teeth. And here is something cool, very cool picture. This is a transmission electron microscope picture of one of the species of strep virgins that we just talked about. Can you guess? Oh, sorry, strep sanguinis. And where does strep sanguinis cause infection? Yes, it causes infection in the heart. This is a picture of strep sanguinis in um, animal cardiac muscle. Yeah, and that's all about strep virgins. Thank you for watching and see you in our next video about uh, the other kinds of strep, the beta hemolytics.